What's up, football fans? You're watching Pound for Pound, and I'm J.R. Clark. If you hadn't already done it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can get notified every time we put out a new video. Uh, with that being said, uh, this video I decided to take a question from the community. Um, something I want to try to start doing more. So if you hadn't followed me on Twitter, um, you can go there and, and follow me. I'm at uh, Grim1128. Uh, you can also follow Toby at uh, TobyD1991. Uh, those are our Twitter handles. Uh, it's a good way to get in contact with us. And like I said, today I pulled a question from our community uh, as just some trying something different. Uh, this question comes in from Sean Long and said, Based on what y'all seen so far, what are the expectations this offseason in Cutter's scheme? Is it still Shaney-esque? That was a really good question, and it got me really thinking. This question came in on our live stream that we did on Sunday. And by the way, thank you all so much for, for supporting us there. Uh, we had a good number of people show up in the stream uh, and asking us questions, and, and it was a really fun time. And that's something we I think we're going to try to do more as the season goes on. Uh, as we've stated before, we got some different things in the works. Uh, we got... Um, a podcast coming up that y'all will be able to download on your favorite uh, devices or not devices but your favorite uh, platforms so when that drops we'll let y'all know for sure uh, but anyway back to, to Sean Long's question it got me really got me thinking like what is this offense going to look like under under cutter is it going to go back and look like what it did and you know when he got here in 2012 all the way up to 2014 or is it going to be like some kind of amalgamation uh, one of the things that Dan Quinn did when he brought Sarkeesian in was ask him to run Shanahan's offense and we saw how that worked and it didn't you know it didn't necessarily work trying to have Sark run you know Shanahan's offense and like I was pretty excited I don't know excited is not the right word I was optimistic as I normally am uh, when the team makes a move, uh, when they first brought Sark in, I went back and watched a lot of stuff from um, the University of Washington when he was the head coach there and USC when he was the head coach there. And I felt pretty good about having him as the OC. I don't know what went wrong in a sense, whether it was him not being comfortable in the NFL um, or him having a real tough time running Shanahan's offense. I'm not 100% sure where the disconnect was, but I will say this for sure. I'm excited about having an NFL caliber offensive coordinator back at the helm of our offense. Because having Sark uh, running the offense, there were plenty of times that, that there was just no rhyme or reason to what he was calling. He wasn't setting the defense up you know, for later on in the game. He wasn't using this look to play off of that look. You know, it just seemed like he was just, you know, calling whatever. He looked like me when I'm trying to play Madden, which none of y'all have ever seen me play Madden, but it's not good. You would think somebody who enjoys football as much as I do and video games as much as I do, I would be good at it. I'm not. Uh, uh, so I'll just stick to doing videos. Anyway, but to have Cutter back at the helm it really got me thinking what is this offense going to look like what is is he going to run is he going to get back to running what he looked like in 2014 and 2013 when he was trying to install more for four vertical passing or was he is he going to try to incorporate some of the stuff that has worked for us in the past few years um and the answer to that is obviously i don't know i'm not privy to the meetings but looking at the data that I could compile, you know, from different sources, whether it be uh, Pro Football Reference or Football Outsiders, I come to the conclusion that it's probably going to be, you know, kind of a, a mashup, right? Because the one thing, the first thing I started looking at was what was the, like, like formation-wise, what was uh, a popular formation? What formation did uh, Cutter like? when he was at his time in Tampa. And 72% 70, of the time in 2018, they ran 11 personnel. 
which most of y'all know that 11 personnel is one running back and one tight end with three wide receivers. So you take a look at the personnel that we have, and you would imagine that that's going to be a pretty popular personnel package for us to run. I mean, it was last year, even with Sark here, we ran it 64% of the time. And so then I got to thinking, I'm like, okay, well, in the Shanahan offense, what, you know, how often did he run? You know, what was the predominant personnel package under that? And the predominant personnel package under that was, you would guess it was, you know, 11 personnel with the three wide receivers. Uh, he ran it about 45% of the time. So that was a, an interesting you know, tidbit there. So I, I expect to see a lot 11 personnel uh, on the field this year uh, with, with Dirk Cutter, you know, running the helm because that gets all of your playmakers on the field at one time. That gets Julio Jones. That gets Calvin Ridley, Sanu, Hooper, Freeman. That gets them all on the field at once. And then you can really start disguising your looks if – say a guy like Luke Stoker can be at least somewhat of a threat in the passing game because then you can put him in there and run passes or runs, you know, regardless. You see what I'm saying? Like, that that's where things start to get interesting is how do the matchups work uh, uh, in any given play and can we run more like hurry up or – more, and I don't know, hurry up's not the right word, more like no huddle type stuff. Can we stay in that 11 personnel and run a bunch of different packages out of it? And I believe that's where I'm excited to have, like I said before, an NFL caliber offensive coordinator back at the helm. Because I think that was a lot of the problem with, with Sark is that he couldn't really set things up. You know, he couldn't really uh, run, or not, I say couldn't, he did run a lot of different things out of the same personnel and a lot of the same looks, but there was no real rhyme or reason to most of it. So uh, I'm excited to have hopefully some creativity back at the helm, uh, you know, of our offense with, with you know, uh, Julio Jones and Matt Ryan because, man, you shouldn't be just beating bad teams because that's what I noticed last year. The only teams that we whooped up on were – bad teams any team that was you know above the like midway through and up we had a tough time with them because it's like it's like Sark couldn't adjust in game so that's what I'm really hoping that Dirk Cutter brings back to our offense is that in-game adjustments I'm really hoping that he doesn't just do like a lot of what we felt like he did the last time he was here you know very predictable running up the middle on the first down and I don't know how much of that was dictated by Mike Smith wanting to have a good run game or not and not having the pieces. Uh, so it would be real interesting to see exactly how Cutter deploys um, you know, deploys his, his talent because I feel like he's got much more talent on this squad than he had any time other than maybe 2012 when he first came here. Uh, with you know Tony Gonzalez and Roddy White, you know, then you know of course you had you know Julio Jones and and all that. That was that was pretty potent uh, offense as well. So I hope we can get back to that. You know, I hope we can get back to the 2016-2012 uh, era of, of Falcons offense. So, but some other interesting numbers, the things that have been brought up over the past you know a couple of weeks on Twitter and things like that. So people are uh, feeling, wondering, like, what are what's the news role going to be in this uh, offense? Is he expendable? So I got to looking at it and trying to see what I could compare to Tampa Bay, you know, last few years of Cutter being in Tampa Bay to, you know, and, and you know, tra laying it on top of uh, what he has here. So what I found was that last year Sanu got 94 targets, right? And so if you kind of – put that towards uh, Tampa Bay's squad, you know, Adam Humphreys got 105 targets. So, and and uh, Chris Good Godwin got 95 targets. So if you take their top three receivers, which was, you know, Mike Evans, Humphreys, and uh, Godwin, you can compare those pretty comparable to Sanu, 
uh, Julio Jones and Ridley. And then the interesting one, I was like, okay, maybe he maybe he used tight ends more than anything else. You know, maybe he was heavily tight end. So I looked at the two tight ends that they that they had down there in Cameron Brait and O.J. Howard, and they have a pretty even split at 49 and 48 targets apiece. I said, okay, so how does that compare to Austin Hooper? Austin Hooper last year had 88 targets. So what I'm getting at is that it's not necessarily, I don't think that, Sanu is going to get phased out this year. Like he might get cut at the end of next year because of money reasons, then that that may happen. But I don't think the role is going to diminish, especially not as willing of a blocker that Sanu really is in the run game. Uh, he's an asset that that you need to keep on the field, in my opinion. Like if you want to have you know if you want to get Freeman going again, you need all the help you can get, whether it be six offensive linemen, which is something that, we, uh, that we've been playing around with in training camp, or, you know, Sanu and Julio being willing blockers. You know, you need all the help you can get when it comes to the run game, uh, especially if we're going to have, you know, offensive linemen maybe not be as healthy as we wanted them to be, right? And so we may end up having to go with some of the backups, but we'll see how this progresses in the preseason so but we got a so that that's where i see the offense going i know it may not i hope i answered your question better uh there's a lot of data to pour over i really feel like in the preseason so far cutter has already showed you some of the the shanahan-esque plays and you know the the rollouts you know the naked boots and stuff like that the uh the double high low concepts that one pass that that Wooten missed, you know, you saw like two two receivers making that that same like route, but at different depths, you know. Uh, so those those were kind of some, kind of things that that you saw Shanahan doing. So uh, if anybody can incorporate some of that offense into what he wants to do, I think Cutter is a guy who can do it. I mean, he did the same stuff when he transitioned from uh, Malarkey to Cutter. They kept a lot of the same verbiages and, you know, incorporated a lot of what Malarkey had, especially in the beginning, and then worked his stuff in slowly. So now with uh, Malarkey back on the staff and Cutter back on the staff, these are two guys who should be very familiar with Matt Ryan and what he likes to do, and Matt Ryan should already have a rapport with these guys. So hopefully they we can just hit the ground running. So... So what I got for you today, like I said, I hope I answered your question, Sean. And I and I ask, you know, that y'all send me your questions. You know, send them to me on Twitter. Uh, you can use the hashtag LB4LB. Uh, that's a way you can find us. And also you can put that at the end of your uh, question, the way I can find you easier. Um, like I said before, uh, always, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe, notifications, all those good fun stuff. Um, because, you know, we're, we're really trying to put a good effort behind all this, trying to make the, the best show that we can. Uh, check us out, me and Toby. We're on the, the What's Up Falcons podcast. Uh, the other day we recorded it, so give that a listen. Uh, Toby, I think that made his third time of being on that show. Uh, it was my first time. Had a lot of fun with that. Appreciate you guys a lot on the What's Up Falcons for inviting me on. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully we can do it again. Um, but like I said, we're working on doing our own podcast, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. When we get it up and running, we'll, we'll have more information for you. And, uh, you know, like I said, just, you know, follow us on Twitter, uh, hit us up on, um, up on the other comments down below. We got a Facebook page up and going now. Uh, it's pound for pound ATL. You can find us there, uh, join up, join the conversation, we're trying to get a little bit more active on all the different platforms. Um, and I believe down below we're going to put some links to some t-shirts if y'all want to buy those. Uh, I'm getting some myself so that y'all can see them. But we'll put links down below to the uh, to the Teespring site if y'all want to. No big deal if you don't. But um, just kind of throwing that stuff out there. But as always, Falcons fans, we appreciate it. We enjoy y'all. Uh, and rise up.